was talking about the difference between symbols and instances of symbols. So these are all the same symbol, they're all different instances. That's an instance, that's an instance, that's an instance, that's an instance. This is an instance that I did something to the instance. I'm tinting it yellow. So you can see that that one is affected, but none of the other ones are affected. Whereas if I went into the actual symbol and started messing with it, um, then they would all be affected. Okay. Um, what should I talk about now? Again, what I really like about Flash is that, well, there's so much that I like about it. But if all else fails, if all else fails, you can just make a bunch of empty, whoops, empty keyframes. And you can just start drawing. So that's frame one. I'm going to turn on onion skinning, has little onion skin things, so I can see a little bit of my thing. Oh, now we should talk about frame rates. Uh, in Flash, um, when you start, you get these settings. I have mine set to 1280 by 720 pixels okay. by default and 24 frames a second. This one, I'm going to change to 18 frames a second. No. Not 18, I'm going to change it to 10 frames a second. Very nice. Look at that. I didn't think that was going to happen at all when I started. I thought I was going to make it run. <laughs> now we have an exploding doggy. Yes, stretch. Ah. <laughs> I love the animation. Um, uh, you know, what would be really cool is if you could um, uh, adjust the frame rate some other way. I'll get into that later. This is a little bit advanced. If I wanted to keep this at 24 frames a second, which I do, then I would have to like manually add frames between these frames. You're saying something like uh, being able to kind of scale Frames. Oh yes, that would be great. I'm sure there are other animation programs that do that, but Flash is not one of them. Scale frames and possibly like be able to smoothly tween where, where that sort of thing is possible. Yeah, although really with Flash's... Yeah, yeah that's yeah. possible. Yes, like where auto-tweening is happening. Yeah. It could re-auto-tween. That would be really nice. Yeah, obviously with like this it would just kind of multiply frames or something. Yeah. But... Yeah, there's no auto-tweening here, so... What it would do it is, is it would insert the, yeah, it would just insert the, you know, it would make the frames hold. That would be a really nice feature, but again, not essential. Like, all yeah. those of us that use Flash, we know how to work around this, we can live with it. But what we can't work around is um, crappy drawing tools. 
I would just, like, everything that I've seen in other software, which is admittedly limited, the thing that makes flash flash is its grammar symbol. I mean, it's symbol grammar. It's just that whole thing where you turn things into symbols, and each symbol has its own timeline, and you can nest symbols inside of symbols. That allows you to make just super complex things. Okay, yeah, that... That, that, that seems actually pretty along the lines of what I was thinking you'd need, but it's it's good to hear that that's really key to... Yeah. Especially producing such you know, armies of green... <laughs> what were they called? Anyway. Green. Oh, the, the demons? Oh, okay. Yeah, the demons. The Rakshasa yes, demons. the Rakshasas. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, Flash is of course great at that. Now one thing I can do with this hand animated thing is I can turn it into a symbol by... Selecting the keyframe, doing edit, uh, timeline. I do shortcuts for all of this, but I'm just going through it. Copy frames, and then make a new symbol, and call it dog exploding. Oh, and by the way, um, the only kind of symbols I use in Flash are what are called graphic symbols. These other kinds of symbols, useless. Useless to animators. Yeah, that, that looks like, I guess, one would be just you include a movie clip in your thing. This is all for the web. Yeah. I mean, okay. like, yeah. it seems like 90% of Flash is stuff that I don't use and never will use. It just happens to have this beautiful animation yeah. production tool stuck into a stupid, you know, 1990s interactive design thing. Okay, so that's the name of my symbol, and now I'm in that symbol, I'm in Dog Exploding. Click on the first frame, edit, timeline, paste the frames, and there those same frames that are in my canvas are now in that symbol. Which means that now, now I can make lots and lots of exploding dogs. And that's what Flash just excels at. Armies of things. Like, and it's just how I think now. It's mm -hmm. like, can I make one little... And that's how nature works, right? Like, there's yeah. just patterns that repeat over and over again. Oh, I can open up some other things that I may say. Okay. Yes. This is not the sort of thing I would normally recommend Flash for. Actually, this is this is the sort of thing where what's called Action Script, which I don't use, would be useful. But I didn't use Action Script. I did it by hand. Um, no, is there a reason you did it by hand? Or? Yes, because I don't I don't use Action Script. Okay. So, so it's kind of just a, Action Script is this big hairy monster that. Yeah, it's probably not really that big or that hairy. I just don't use it. It's like faster for me to do things by hand. Although some people have have. I mean, sometimes, like, I find that the problem with relying on the computer too much is that the stuff just looks computery. Yeah. Um, that is actually a little bit of a problem with Anime Studio Pro, is, like, I can look at something and go, like, oh, they used Anime Studio Pro, like, I can just see the way it's bending. It has a physics engine, which is amazing, it's really cool, yeah. but it looks like a physics engine. Like, a real animator doesn't do things, like, when you do yeah. stuff from your hand, 
it doesn't quite look like that. There's a cartoon sort of style and aesthetic that doesn't get transferred. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to have that. I like having that control, but I'm sure there's some automation that would have saved time here. Anyway, if you can't guess what happened here, let's see, tail, snake tail. Oh, I'm just going to have to go into this symbol. All right. Um, oh, um, I have a problem with badly naming my symbols, especially when I'm just exploring things. Um, okay. If, if I were good, I would cleverly and appropriately name them all, but I don't do that. Would it help if, okay, what happens if you rename a symbol in Flash? Does it break other things? Nope. Okay, so you could just kind of rename them if you yes. felt like it. Yes. Okay. The thing with me is that I, um, I'll copy symbols from movie to movie, mm -hmm. and renaming actually is is a good thing. In fact, there's this uh, plugin called Power Tools for Flash, which um, you know their website vanished, so I don't think the people that made it are working on it anymore, which is really too bad. So in other words, it's probably hard to get. <laughs> if it's, you know. It was called Electric Dog. They were really great tools. Okay. FlashPowerTools.com It just like disappeared a while ago. And had I known it was going to disappear, you know, I would have sent them money or something. Uh, wait, what happened? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's gone. No longer available. That just that seems to be gone. What? Is that what that means when it turns blue like that? Mm -hmm. Things aren't working. Do I have to quit out of Chrome? I think I do. Fine. Anyway, one <laughs> of the power tools that I have made a great deal of use of is. Um, uh, uh, you can change the prefix or suffix of all of your symbols. Mm. That has been supremely useful. The reason I do that is like I'll have a symbol like this and then without keeping very good track I'll have it in another movie where I'll have changed something about it and then if I copy it back it will then have a library, there will be a library conflict. Um, so if I, let's say if I make her blue or something, if I make all these segments blue for some other reason, for some other scene, and then blithely somehow copy it back into this, then she'll turn all the ones in this scene blue as well, and I won't want that. Okay. So by being able to change the prefix or the suffix... And it's because the name is the same that it... Yes. Okay. So what if the, what the symbol was... But like its universal name to the computer was independent of its name as far as you saw in a given project. So if you changed it later, it would be a different symbol that would just happen to be called the same thing. So. Oh, uh, that would be interesting. Okay. I would, I mean, I, it sounds interesting. I would love to yeah. see, see, this is why I need developers around yeah. so I can go like, um, yeah, that works. I, I need and to honestly, play with it. If, if you talked to me about this a year ago, I wouldn't have thought of that. But um, that's like how like how Novacut does things. Like you can put you can label what a file is like in its in the metadata we keep about it. So like the user just sees oh it's this, but the computer it's oh it's exactly this specific thing that is nothing else. Yeah, what would be cool is if you copy this. Well, but the thing is sometimes you don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you really don't want to do that because there's a clever thing that I rely on a lot. Um, which is, okay, so sometimes the files get really heavy, mm -hmm. um, and it gets, it slows down when I want to make a change to that symbol. So yeah. what I'll do is I'll copy the symbol into another file, make the change I want to okay. it, then copy it back, and that will universally change, and I want to make sure that it is, it's actually powerful that you can copy it back and, sh and then change all the symbols that you've got. Okay. Um, although what if you could deal with, like, just that one chunk without the rest? and just kind of change the thing itself, but the pointer keeps pointing to that thing the whole time. I don't, I okay. don't yeah. know. It would be good to have more options. Okay. okay. In other yeah. words, what you're talking about is having more options, that would be cool. I would love okay. to, yeah. though, preserve the option yeah. of um, 
being able to just drop a symbol back into something and have it change the whole thing. I mean, that is how symbols yeah. work, right? Like, that's, yeah. the, that's the magic of symbols. Yeah. So you've changed something um, on the symbol level, and you've changed everything. Okay, yeah, because you could do that, and then maybe you could, like, say, um, change all symbols to point to this new thing, or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to see okay. how it works yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to describe. Yeah, but, interesting to yeah. think of. All right. Um, oh, by yeah. the way, let's okay. check this thing. See, still recording. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so, right, so how did I make this thing? Oh, I'll bet this thing shuts out at, off at half an hour. Probably. Due to European import duties. European import duties? Yes, if the camera can record more than 30 minutes continuously, it ch it's a higher duty rate. All right, um, so here's how I did this. Look at all those layers. Wow. Um, I think I remember how I did this. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, what I did was, let's see if I can re... Um, I'll rebuild it. Watch it segment. All right, so I have these, I have this segment, right? And I want them. Oh, actually, I have a really clever. I'm going to do a bunch of, can I do a bunch of clever things that are going to be really hard to explain? Like sure. It will take me forever to explain them, but, and I didn't even do this the first time. Um, man. Sure, just do things how you it's would. It's just so hard for me to explain what I was going to do. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll turn that into another symbol and call this uh, segment scaling. So I want, how many segments do I want? Let's say I want 24 segments. Five. So it's going to be a motion tween. It's going to be small here. And it's going to be big here. Whoops. It's going to be space like this. Okay, let's have a look at the thing. There's easing in and out. Let's ease it in. What happens? That looks pretty good. Let's make it a little smaller on the top. Make it a little shorter. Let's ease it. Let's ease it in some more. This easing curve. Pretty much all animation programs have, ugh, I do not know what's wrong with that. You know what, this happened, this is like a bug in this particular operating system. Um, now it's getting really small. I can go to the transform box, adjust it that way. Um, let's assume that looks sneaky enough. Okay, so that's what's going on in that symbol. In that symbol, we have it growing like that. Yeah. Now I'm going to copy and paste. Command C, Command Shift, Command V, paste in place. I'm going to change the start frame of this one to two. Command C, paste in place. Change the start frame to three. 
Command C, paste in place, change the start frame to 4. Paste in place, change the start frame to 5. Change the start frame to 6. On the one hand, I'd think, like, yes, it would be great if there were something that automated this. On the other hand, um, this is a pretty niche, niche thing that I'm doing. I don't know how much demand there would be for this. So I don't quite like the way those are distributed. I can figure that out by just... Uh, Whoa! Hello! 14, let's look at that. 100, and... There we go. That looks nice. Okay. So now I'm happy with this. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now I do a suave move called distribute to layers. The shortcut for that is shift command D. That has now put every single one on its own layer. Um, and now I'm going to break them apart because if I, I want to move them from side to side, but, uh, let's see if I capture that there. But you see, if I do that, then they're going to be like going up and down like that. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. So I'm just going to command all, whoops. And then, uh, there's something called command B, break apart symbol. So now they're the lower levels of the same symbol. Okay. So in other words, when I went into them before, um, here, like this is currently, um, okay, so this is currently segment scaling. Mm -hmm. So if I go into it, I get this thing. But by breaking all of them apart, command B, now this is a mere wadget segment vertical. Okay. Whatever that was called before. It's just a segment. See if I'd named it properly, it would be segment. This is this shows like this is traces of like a long history of how I came up with this snake. But it's not like I knew what I wanted at the beginning. It's just I used bits and pieces and didn't think about renaming them. Anyway, okay, so we have this lovely thing. Command all. I'm gonna align them that way. Am I going to align them that way? Yeah, we're just aligning them that way. Okay, so let's see. Okay. I should select all the colors. Right. So I'll just 
this. Oh, actually, I shouldn't launch them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, six. That way. Over here, I'll do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. can uh, option drag frames. So I'm just going to option drag this to frame 49. Is that right? Yes, frame 49. Okay. Alright, so what we have is this. Pretty boring, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty boring. And the cycle is 49 frames instead of 48 frames because um, I'm going to want to make it into a 48 frame loop and that frame is exactly the same as that frame. Mm. So what I'm going to do is after I've finished animating it, I'll slip it down. So I want this to be a little more. One, two, three, four. Now, um, I need to change all of these frames to ease in and out, so I'm going to do that by going here, the simplest way to do it. Go exactly halfway between, is that halfway between? Yes. Six. Six, so I'm going to ease in, ease out, ease in, ease, is that the right frame? No, no ho. It's on ease out there. Let's just copy this frame. Ease in, okay. So now it's timed, it's going a little faster in the middle and slower at the edge. Okay, fine, right? Now I simply move each one of these suckers over. Should give me a nice S. Oops. You know, someone's going to be watching me work this way going, ah, that could all be automated. And it could. And I would be happy if it were. <laughs> 